hey guys and welcome to today's video so today's video is going to be my top fall picks for 2022 and this video is going to be a little different usually i do fragrances i'm looking forward to revisiting top fragrances for like day night i'll link my whole fall series below so instead i just kind of wanted to do new fragrances that i am going to be picking up this fall because they're new i want to try them they're fragrances that while not all of them were like love at first sniff they're fragrances i want to test out and really get to know but we have a lot to go over so let's go ahead and get into the video okay so the first fragrance i'm going to go over was actually in my declutter video and i decided to keep it because this perfume is giving me fall time vibes and that is bdk's passessoire i've pulled this one out more in spring and summer so i'm really going to give it a good wear in fall i also am looking forward to sunset hour by goldfield and banks and i kind of want to layer these so i'm gonna have to try these out and let you know how they go but i have a feeling that these two together are going to be bomb this one's juicy this is like a gorgeous mouth-watering kind of juicy scent but i think these are going to be really beautiful fruity florals for fall they're not as fresh as some of my other fruity florals these are a little bit more juicy and warm spicy this one's a little bit more warm spicy so i wanted to talk about these hand in hand because i'm going to be doing a layering video video for fall so i'm going to have to report back but i'm looking forward to really playing around with these in fall and also playing around with them together. There's a few that I'm gonna talk about hand in hand. I did get a few fragrances from M. Mikalev. I got Note Vanille and then I got, I think it was Glamour and Passion. But I'm really looking forward to playing around with Passion. When I had tested it out, I was like, this one's gonna be, yes, oh my goodness. This one's kind of like a spicy, woody, ambery, fragrance this one has oud orange cinnamon caramel benzoin sandalwood yeah i'm gonna play with this one in fall probably a little closer to the holidays because the cinnamon that's in here is giving me holiday vibes and i had mentioned that this is one that because i want to add one of those gorgeous bottles in my collection but i want to see if this is one because a travel might be just what i need and then also note vanille this is just a gorgeous vanilla scent i'm not big on vanillas i'm always trying to find vanillas that aren't overly like gourmand or foody yeah this one has something clean and musky about it and it's just warm and cozy but it's not cloying or sickingly sweet there's some vanillas that can make me a little nauseous and this one's just beautiful this one in k alley's vanilla 28 they're kind of similar they both have this kind of booziness i'm not sure if that one has like boozy notes this one has boozy notes but this is my kind of like vanilla it's not too loud not too cloying so i'm really looking forward to playing around with these two the glamour one is really nice but it smells like alien in my opinion i do wear that one i'll pop it in my purse because it's a nice travel but even dennis he noticed okay and then i am looking forward to playing around with soleil vibrant i just did a video i don't know which one's going up first but i do talk about this one and even though this is an everyday fragrance there's just something about both of the soleils that give me fall vibes but florida fall vibes gotta create fall because it's not cold here this one is a very kind of bright uplifting citrus vanilla fragrance if i had to just put it somewhere really quick this has other notes but i really pick up on the vanilla bourbon or bourbon vanilla i, I see it both ways but it's the citrus that makes this one kind of interesting i don't have a lot of kind of citrus warm vanilla scents and this one has a sweetness to it, but without being foodie either. Like this one isn't a gourmand the way the original is considered a, a gourmand. This is a amber floral, but this one I would say I almost get more of a sweetness in this one than I get in the original. So I'm really looking forward to playing around 
with this one. Okay, and then two House of Siage. And we have here the Batman. I'm gonna smell all kinds of crazy. This is dark and sexy. This has red apple. This has tonka bean. There's patchouli in here. This is a very kind of dark, sexy, mysterious fragrance. Now this is one that even though they don't list oud, it has something in it that kind of is oudy to my nose. Almost like a wearable, this doesn't smell like oud bouquet, but it's a little bit more wearable. Something I can wear again. It doesn't get super cold until like after December in Florida. We, we might have cold fronts, but it stays pretty warm. I don't really get the oak moss. I do get the vetiver that's in here. But there's something to my nose and it's kind of going away now, but I'm starting to get more of the patchouli. But when this first opens up, there's something that smells kind of oody to my nose. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Now, the apple note that I really enjoy in here doesn't really stick around too much. So I did layer this with Kaylee's Juicy Eden Apple. And so I'm really looking forward to playing around with this one in fall. I think that's going to be a beautiful, especially around nighttime. And then I'm really looking forward to playing with Chauvado. This is like, I think these two might layer really nicely together. I'm going to play around with that and I'll have to follow it up in my fall layering video. Yeah. This is like your jammy rose. This falls in the same scent profile as those fragrances that I was chasing, but this is what I wanted. This is more likable. This doesn't have the synthetic note that I was picking up in Mina Ricci's Absolute Lextas, that one, as well as Swiss Arabian's Florence, also Intense Cafe. I'll pop in a picture. It's what I've been, I mean, this whole scent profile right here. Yeah, that's what this falls in, in line with, but this isn't overly synthetic. It's blended a little bit more. There's also something really harsh in some of those other scents, especially the Montal and the Mancera that comes off like burnt rubber. I couldn't get past that. A few of the other ones, it was a synthetic note. So there was always something throwing those fragrances off. I think the closest I got, I think was Deluxe by Tiziana Terenzi, but that one became a little too much. This one's light, airy, rosy. It's got that jammy, sweet rose that I think will be beautiful for fall. So I'm really looking forward to playing around with this one. This one and the Batman one. It's actually one I'm gonna layer together. Okay, another set I'm gonna talk about hand in hand are two from Victor and Rolf. We have a Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid and then Good Fortune. I would say I love Flower Bomb for the holidays. I don't know what it is about the original that gives me gourmand vibes more than it does a floral explosion. This one's nice. The peach in here isn't juicy. It's a little bit more of like the fuzzy peach skin. Like there's something that tickles my nose in this one. This one is like a nice kind of toned down flower bomb. Like you still get the DNA. I also said that this is like if nectar and flower bomb had a baby and then you took out the patchouli, you get ruby orchid. So this one I've actually been enjoying. I went back and forth with this one. I think it's the vine note that's in here that wasn't playing well when I had first hauled it, but I revisited it and now I really like this scent. So I am looking forward to wearing it because I do find this one to be just a little bit more fall in my opinion. And then Victor and Rolf, good fortune. Now this is one, yeah. When it opens up to my nose, it's a little bit more young and fun. And I said this in my review, I'll link it below. But then as this dries down, it does become more of a floral scent. I remember when I wore this scent, Dennis asked what I was wearing. And I, I asked him, you know, why is it bad? And he's like, no, you smell like potpourri. <laughs> I feel like people who say something smells like potpourri, it's their way of saying it's overly floral. I was like, was that bad? He's like, no, potpourri smells <laughs> good, but I don't want to smell like potpourri. So I know that this isn't liked by a lot of people. 
but I really enjoy the fennel note that's in here. If you get the fennel note the way I do, that is what makes this fragrance a little bit more sexy, a little bit more grown up, and unique to my nose. So for me, it opens up kind of bright, bubblegummy, and sweet, and then it does dry down to more of a white floral vanilla scent and then it's got a spiciness. So again, that is Victor and Rolf's Good Fortune. Okay, two other ones I'm gonna kind of talk about hand in hand is L'Entradit by Givenchy. And we have here the Intense and then the Rouge. These do smell similar in the way dry down. But to me, this one, the Intense, is a little bit more vanilla, sweet vanilla tuberose, beautiful and then the rouge version is a little bit more like festive this one has a zestiness from the ginger but for whatever reason i don't know if it's the blood orange with the ginger it comes off a little cinnamon to my nose this one gives me more fall vibes like when i think of the leaves changing which i don't get that here so i like to just feel like i have the leaves changing even though i don't get that i'm from up north so i remember playing in the leaves and i miss that and this gives me total fall vibes it reminds me of the leaves changing into that beautiful kind of red color thanksgiving and like the cinnamon broomsticks not that this is overly cinnamon but this gives me total holiday vibes this just for whatever reason just it kind of sets that feeling and it's one that i can wear in the florida heat i know not everyone would but i can i have <laughs> so and it does dry down to smell a lot like the intense but there are certain fragrances where i can put them in a season so i like having the various flankers and then there's some that i just like the og it, nothing can top it kind of like my mom petty i've had various flankers to that one and i just like the original and the floral but when it comes to the leap perfumes and the givenchy l'entradi i don't know what it is i like having the slight differences i like that this one's a little bit more cinnamony i like that this one's a little bit more vanillic i like that the original is a little bit more classy kind of your sweet classy floral tuberose and i like that the eau de toilette is the fresh version so i really enjoy the line and i'm really looking forward to wearing both of these in fall another fragrance this one's definitely a fragrance i can wear year-round and that is narciso rodriguez musk noir rose it's definitely one that i would say if you're not into narciso rodriguez because the musk is too much check out this one and the original musk noir this one's a little bit more juicy from the like they both have plum but i really pick up the plum and this one it's a dark juicy plum kind of spicy there's a theme and i say this in every fall video i really love warm spicy and fall this one's kind of spicy there's rose it's got a muskiness but it's blended very nice and it's kind of sexy and sensual really looking forward to this one especially like date night this is one that dennis did like and then another one that i already know I'm, this was a love effort sniff because this does smell a lot like the pillar but this is c intense and this is the 2021 version because it did come out with another c intense in 2014 but i feel like this is the perfected the best c of its line the original C I, I like, but the Frisian note started to really bug me in that one. And I don't get the Frisian note in here. I don't know if it's if it's in here or not. I don't think they list it, but I don't get it in here. This one is more intense, but not as intense as the 2014 version. This one's smoother. This one is boozy. Like it's got that famous black currant that all of them have i just want to smell this one let me put it on another part of my i have all these perfumes layered it opens up with that intoxicating boozy black currant that comes off like red wine to my nose like a dry red wine and then i get a rosiness and then the warm amber and even though they don't list 
incense in this one, I do get a smokiness in this one that I also get in the Le Parfum version. Gorgeous, and I already know I'm gonna wear, love this around the holidays. This one and the Le Parfum. I feel like I mentioned the Le Parfum last fall. All right, and then the next three are newer. Two were love at first sniff, and one is one that I'm looking forward to wearing to see if the weather kind of changes it. So we're gonna go over that one first. That is Lancome's Edol Nectar. I absolutely love the opening of this scent. This is a juicier Edol. This is, they don't list like peach or nectarine, but there's this juicy fruit that I get in this scent. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's this juicy fruit opening because the original has pear. This doesn't smell pear to my nose unless it's an overripe. This is more like a like a juicy ne nectarine or a juicy peach. Maybe more nectarine. I actually been eating nectarines all this past week. It's more of a nectarine to my nose. Then it dries down to smell a lot like the original Edol. But the popcorn note that's in here kind of reminds me of the salt note in the aura version that it comes off a little dusty i don't get that on the card it's like that more on my skin i really like the sweetness that comes from the caramel but it's not like a caramel fragrance like don't think of the gooey candy kind of thick caramel it's a touch of sweetness that's added but then the popcorn note comes in and it it's to me more of a salty popcorn but it, it comes off dusty so this is one that i love on the card i don't love it on my skin so i'm gonna be playing around with this one some more i'll let you guys know how this does in cooler weather okay then we have libre le parfum this smells a lot like the original libre to me you get the vanilla tonka bean from the intense and i really do get the lavender a lot in this one but the lavender in here is different and i don't know if it's because the honey or maybe the ginger is maybe keeping it from being screechy because i know that the original and the intense and the edt is one that people say didn't work out because it's screechy so i'm wondering if the honey note is kind of smoothing that out because i really pick up the lavender on my skin and on the card I really get the lavender, but I enjoy lavender fragrances. I love them in my fragrances and I love them in men's fragrances. So I really detect the lavender. So this one has ginger and saffron and saffron to my nose has always been like a bittersweet, spicy note to my nose. Not as spicy as cardamom, but it does come off kind of like a bittersweet spice to my nose. And then the ginger adds a zestiness. So in the opening, this one does have kind of that masculine edge, but then when it dries down, the more I wore it, it did get sweeter from the honey, but the honey smoothed the scent out more than it smelled like a thick honey. Cause when I think of honey scents, to me, it's more thick and honey-like in like my Scandal fragrances. And I didn't get that. I didn't. Everyone picks up fragrances differently. I couldn't get the honey that way, but it did get sweeter. So it's one that does soften to be a little bit more, a little bit more sweet and feminine in the dry down. So I'm really looking forward to playing with this one more. I really like the added honey and the added kind of zesty spiciness that I get from this one. Again, warm, spicy, that's what I love. Okay, and then last we have Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry. And this is a fragrance that I got really late. And then just recently, Mona Katan and her team did send me a 50 ml of this fragrance. So I do have it as a backup because I do always keep at least one fragrance from any company that sends me anything. I like to keep one. So if I go through this, that's my backup bottle. But <laughs> if I ever get other PR, 
and I don't get to that one, I might do a giveaway in the future. I just can't do it now because, I mean, I was super excited to get that package. And I want to say thank you to Mona and her team for thinking of me. That is very special. I'm very appreciative of it. So I'm really excited. This is the one I purchased. This is the 100 mil. So I did purchase uh, the 100 mil and the mini. And then my friend Rebecca gave me the travel. So I think I have this scent in, in every size. But this has notes of burning cherry, raspberry, praline, palo santo, guayac wood, and patchouli. And this scent is just perfect for Florida fall. Gives me total fall vibes, but it's not too loud or overdone that I can't wear this one in the Florida heat. So this opens up with that burning cherry, which comes off more like, like a cherry liqueur to my nose. Cherry tends to give me like a boozy, like a boozy vibe. And then I get like a sweetness that's probably coming from the praline. And then this does have something very, again, warm, spicy about it. And then I do get something that's kind of incensey and smoky so i do get something that's kind of smoky and woody but not like smoky like when you think of fragrances like by the fireplace where it smells a little bit more smoky in the opening kind of like really being around like a fire pit this is more like that incense vibe and i do believe that's coming from the palo santo that is like a type of wood that people burn it for different remedies and kind of like to cleanse like a house like of its negative energy so while this isn't like overly smoky to my nose there is something kind of incensey to my nose very beautiful i'm really happy that i got this one and that it worked out this is definitely giving me all the fall vibes it's giving me kind of like your fair vibes when you think of like a hayride <laughs> just the feeling of fall but again i have to kind of create that because it's just super hot i mean look at what i'm wearing in fall and again that is kayali love fest burning cherry so those are my top fall picks for 2022 again these are not top loves of mine yet some are love at first sniff these are just the fragrances that i recently hauled this past year that i am just especially looking forward to wearing this fall and really playing with them if you want to check out some of my top fall picks i will link my playlist below there's only a handful of those that i no longer have but i do have updates on those as well but let me know in the comments below did you guys pick up any of these new fragrances what are you looking forward to playing with this fall but that will do it for today's video i hope you liked it if you did please give it a thumbs up and i will catch you guys in my next video bye guys